Bill uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, July 11, 2017. Would you raise, uh, would you rise and join me saying the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like uh, to entertain a motion to approve uh, warrants from 6117 for uh, $556.80, approve an expense warrant from 62017 for $15,999.97, ratify a payroll warrant for 62917. $265,763.20. Ratify a payroll warrant for $629.17 for $40,520.04. Approve an expense warrant for $630.17 for $6,591.23. Approve an expense warrant for $7,117 for $247 thousand and forty three dollars and approve a school assessment payment number six for two thousand sixty three thousand eight sixty five i'll make that motion second i'll, I'll approve Aye. 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 and then i would also like to um, approve selectman's minutes from 6 12 17 6 27 17 7 5 17. i'll make that motion second any discussion I'll approve. Aye. 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 And now we have um, approved minutes from the uh, other departments, the fire minutes from June 17, 2017, emergency squad monthly report from June 2017 also. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll approve. Aye. And Aye. then I have here, we have a couple anniversaries of firefighters, Stephen Butnick, who has given 36 years to the town, and Matthew Graves, 18 years. I'd like to congratulate them for their public service to the town. In the emergency squad, we have paramedic John Glennon, who's been with us for nine years. So I'd like to congratulate all of them and thank them for giving services for the town all over here. Yes, excellent. Okay, now our next is uh, public access. Do we have anybody here for public access this evening? We doing how many seasonal workers do we have in this town right now uh, highway boss is here can he answer that question I saw two guys two guys one seasonal worker that I know of and I saw another new guy so we have a core fundamental budget for seasonal workers that is in terms of dollars not in terms of positions. Six months. Six no, months. In terms of dollars. Yeah. Not of positions. So but how based many? On six months, right. forty hours. How many seasonal workers do we have? And I saw four guys cutting grass. I mean, we were supposed to get one seasonal worker, so the highway department can get their work done. One I saw one people. guy cutting, and the other three standing there down in South Pond about two weeks ago. I know one of the gentlemen that has been mowing the lawns is one of these ones that doing it. He's doing a senior tax write-off. Yeah, the uh, veterans, the veterans, veterans work staff. off. I okay. think, in fact, perhaps okay. two of them are. But at the end of the day, and, and I got a, at least one of them is work off. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the seasonal worker is budgeted against dollars. If we don't, yes, have I was on the advisory work, board, Beth. I know. If we don't have somebody that can work forty hours, and it takes two people twenty hours to get the work done then that's what happens. So you don't that's, need to worry about how many individuals are hired against a particular budget, as long as that budget isn't overspent. It's really of no concern as long as the work gets done and it doesn't exceed the budget. Okay, well, I, like I said, I'm gonna go back. Your propaganda is well taken as usual. 
I saw three three guys down on South Pond. One guy was cutting and two were standing there. I mean, how many guys were you cutting grass in our town here? We were supposed to have one seasonal worker take care of the lawns. Because, as our highway boss said, he's too valuable. He was one of the people down on South Pond cutting the grass. So what's what's up? Well, I mean, what are we getting done in, in the town here is what I want to know. Where's the management? That's a different question. So first of all, what's getting done is a different question. Than how many okay, but let's, well, let me ask you, why do we have two, three guys out there cutting grass? When there's so much to be, there's so much, we don't have time. There's so much to be done. Why do we get the whole crew out there cutting grass? Well, can, Mr. Chafee, would you like to yeah. answer that question? Well, first of all, I'll let him answer the question for me. All right. There's three people standing there, Mr. John David Holbrook. You. You were one of them, and then there was a seasonal worker standing there, and one other seasonal worker was actually doing the work. Oh, well, guess what? That's the answer. There was one seasonal worker standing yep. there doing the work with a full-time person from the highway department. Two. John David Holcraft. Two guys standing there. You were one of them, and someone else. I had and to there's... stop in to see what, what's going on, because I had to go over there, period. You all seem to have equipment in your hands, so. So, what's the, all so I'm if, asking if you is. equipment in their hands, they were working. Right. Instead of stealing. They were in the parking so, lot. Beth, don't try to defend them. They no, were in the no, parking lot. The story's lot. changing. So. The story's not changing. So I said two people were standing there, one guy was working. For what period of time was there any exchange going on? You know, you can take a snapshot in time at any moment. Yeah, that's right. He was, he was stopping in to verify that the work was getting done to standard. He's a supervisor. The, yeah, we could, we, you know what? You can do the propaganda, but you know what? I want to know why we got two, three guys cutting grass is my question. Because there's two, three guys worth of work if those people are not full time. They're so, so we were supposed and to have one guy, you, one guy happened. cutting grass, Beth. So yes, but if you have if you have people that are doing work off programs, they've been helping with the grass. That's fine, but not other people full time from the highway department. So it's not. So basically, we have the budget, we have the work to do. It's up to the highway superintendent how okay. to assign his people in order to get the work done. <clears throat> And to prioritize it. I, that's not okay. Just bear this in mind. On the six, we have six months. So when the seasonal work is started, they're back all, in the all done in, November. in six yeah, months. And, okay, and we'll just make. You have you know just, what you have is a budget. And the budget, and yes. We have X number of dollars. If, it, if it's spent in three months or it's spent in six months, it stops getting that's spent correct. when the funding is spent. Right. That's the way that it works. Right. If okay. if it works properly, and, and you know and, it's not going to work that way, Beth. Well. I don't know that. No. Because I do want past experiences. No, because actually, I past have experiences. This issue in the past. Okay, that's 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 all right, I made. All right, I made my point. I made my point. Okay, what's the next one? Okay, I'd like to know why you didn't reappoint the secretary on the advisory board. She didn't put in for it. As far as I know, she did. She told me she did. I didn't. I didn't see anything. She I wanted to be on. There was an appointment slip there for her. Yeah. I didn't see that she had put in a letter to be reappointed. No, I don't really remember what she put in the letter either, but I know that. The she put in the letter. She put in the letter. I didn't see I didn't any see letter that they were reappointed. So no one, no one I, wants to. I don't recall mm -hmm. either, but I, I will look it up. Look it up. What are you going to look up? I mean, she put it in. I'm going to look up in the email, see if she Just, sent me an email. We had a lot of we had a lot of different people this year that put in to be on the advisory board, and we appointed a lot of different people. We thought some new blood on the advisory board. Would okay, be good. that's my point. But now you have a whole advisory board, and no, there's only one person that knows anything. Beth's in here trying to trying to show them what what a uh, municipal transfer is. No one knows anything now. No, actually, I was in there and you're trying to we standardized the information that was going out to the advisory. Well, we have two members. You were in the, I was in there. You were in there explaining to them what a municipal transfer was. So don't try to keep putting this propaganda and There's trying to explain wrong things. With that for the new people. No, that's good, but because Beth had served right. on the board once before, and we do have two members on the board that are veteran board members. You have one person on the board that has experience. The other two that are trying to be chairman only showed up 50% of the time. So what I'm trying to say is you have an advisory board now with very little knowledge. So it's pretty much the way you want it because then you can, they'll do what you want. And that's not the idea of the Dave, advisory Dave, board. Dave, it's not that way at all. Okay. These people come, a lot of them come from the financial world and, they, mm. and they've been, one, I think one is, was a retired accountant. Yeah. And I know some other people have some banking industry. They've got uh, 
a lot of skills lot that we haven't skills. seen in a long okay. time. They also have a former selectman I didn't see them. knows what a municipal transfer is. It's just in order to make sure. I don't want the full burden of getting No, but I'm just saying, right. So just that's why I'm just, my point is that's all good, everything. That's good. Mm -hmm. and, and that's great for the town. But when you have you have a good secretary who was very dependable, not not reappointed, and you got hardly anyone that has any knowledge on the board, that's my point. I'm trying to make. We do have one woman that's on the board. She's you know? been on for many many years. On the advisory has, board. Yeah, she has a lot of history in this. Okay, time. that's good. But I'm just saying, from what has been taking place, there's no one but one person right now that knows what's going on. We have this. Three yeah. Farm don't don't frown, Beth. I mean, they're all new. You just said that. Three former members on the board. Right. Right. So you've got you've got Barbara Wilson. But you've she's not Bob there. Barbara's, Barbara's not. Okay. Well, Barbara she won't said be that there. She on Bob being. Barnes is the only one, that, and then so, you have two other so, people, three other people. So you've got Bob Falter, who's who's been on, who understands years, what's going on for two years, years now. now. We've got he, Bobby un, he started. Well, why were you ex okay? Why are you explaining what municipal transfers were then? Because we did have at least two brand new people in the room, mm -hmm. and. Sometimes people's understanding is a little bit different from going back to the book. Mm. And I'm a big fan of going back to the book and specifically, you know, taking taking it straight out of the municipal finance booklet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people start to say, well, this is what we do and this is how we've always done it instead of saying, this is what the state law says and this is what we ought to be following for a procedure. It used to drive me absolutely Batty while I was on the advisory that people had their own perception of what we've done in Brookfield right. and not necessarily right, but that's, what state law dictates. Okay. So then there's the so, other so form of members. To, one way to improve the communication is to have a selectman attend and uh, for the people who want the information like the brand new people to do a real short mm. bullet of training each meeting in order to say, hey, this is what's right in front of us. Here's what the calendar ought to look like. Here's what the next activities are for the state. I don't need. I don't need a lesson on on all that. Okay. I'll just ask right. a question. Well, you're one of the people that tends to contribute to that drift of this is the way. I no, that's to no. Do it it's just it, it is a municipal says. transfer. Is a municipal transfer. It's not what you want to so make it. So it was a it was a five you know? minute introduction to it. And you should have had someone in on the one of the former members explain it. They can relate to to the other members that are there. Okay, all right, we'll take that under yeah. advisement. What, okay, what else do yeah. we have? What's what's going on with Friday now? You close Fridays, the town hall. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. How are people? How we're going to go back like two, three years when we had that assistant treasurer, assistant secretary. How she she didn't even she got a free eight hours every every week. And we can, how are the people going to be working their hours? That do work cool. on Fridays. Well, um, well, I decided that originally it was a, a choice whether to work at home or put me out. I decided last week that what I'm going to, what I've been doing this week, is I have a schedule so that I'm putting in all the 40 mm -hmm. hours between mm -hmm. Monday and Thursday, and then I'll just take Friday off. Then there won't be any controversy whether I'm working on Fridays. And, and on the off time, I'm going to come in early in the morning when the town hall's already open, so I'm not wasting electricity. I'm going to work on my minutes then, and I'm going to stay late Wednesday night and stay till 5 the other nights and, and late Wednesday night and work on my minutes then. So it's not interfering. That's good, because working at home doesn't work. Well, plus, I don't want to have to be able to have people think I'm not working. Well, that's what so, happened so a few years back, right? That's what happened a few years back. I think, they, you know, I think some of the other ones have changed their hours too. But say if somebody want decides that they want to come in here on a Friday and do some work, they're allowed. You know, they're allowed to come in and do it because a lot of time our former um, DC treasurer, she used to be in here on, all day on Friday working so, with catch up. But I mean, the town hall will be locked. Because what would be what for what safety happens, reasons, right? Yes. Yeah, so what happens when Which is good. is here on Fridays? A lot of time, people would come in and they'd want to, you know, pay these bills and you know different bills like this, and they want to say something from the town clerk, and Karen couldn't help them out, so they would leave very frustrated. So we thought the best thing to do was to close the town hall on Fridays. Okay, so so the people that uh, have currently been working Fridays, they're not going to be working from home, right? Because that's a bad practice. We got into that no, years they're ago. they're not working from home. If they they're going to make their hours up. Yeah, like what do you mean? Who make yeah, their and you don't get to Well, whoever's, like practices. the treasurer used to come in on Fridays, and, and Karen used to come in. The tax collector used to come in. 
And she's I don't know. Going to, she's extending I don't know. her hours. She, 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 well, she has been. She has she's been. been working till five every night, so she's already. And then Wednesday, Wednesday she's here till eight, right? And she's here till eight. Eight, eight o'clock on Wednesdays. So it's really just when the treasurer comes yeah, in. Yeah, the treasurer. And, and if the treasurer wants to come in on a Friday and, you know, lock all the doors, she can come in. Uh, she can come in on a Friday. Okay, but, okay, so what, I guess my point is the practice is we're, we're not going to be working from home because that don't work no, and it doesn't happen. No, going to be working okay. from home. Because we're just going backwards now. Okay. All right. Thanks for the uh, discussion. Does anyone else have anything for public access? Mr. Ted? Good evening. <clears throat> and I, and I have two things. The first one is in reference to the South Pond Beach. The floats aren't out. And it's been pretty heavily used. And I thought that the floats I were thought, supposed to be I out. I thought the Recreation yes. Committee usually put the floats <clears throat> And just... The last time I saw them, they they laid on the beach all all winter, so I don't even know what kind of condition they're in. They're, they're usually uh, what by July fourth. It's July supposed 4th. to be after the what is it the week after the Memorial fourth. Day or oh, whatever it is. Memorial, because right. I know that they usually. Yeah. Well, they, they, well, they send a note to Jeff. Yeah, yeah. We'll just send a note just to Jeff double again. check and okay. see yeah. if they have sure. that in the on their agenda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing is. Um, and I can either talk about it now or I can wait until you get to capital uh, uh, planning. And that's in reference to the water department's vehicle. Seeing as there was kind of an issue with the fire department vehicle, I just want to be sure what I need to do, what the water commission needs to do in order to purchase the vehicle. What is that procedure book? Is the procedure forms updated for the capital? Um, yeah, we haven't put the forms no. in yet, but Carrie has, yeah, okay. so has the latest forms. Carrie has the latest one. Carrie does? Yeah. Okay. I, go in and see Carrie. And yeah, because she can. Okay, it's not that it's going to happen, you know, immediately anyway. Yeah. I just want to be sure okay. that. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay, we're seeing that um, we don't have. Wasn't Kermit going to come in? I left a message for him because he didn't answer the phone, so I don't know if he got it. Asking him to come in early if he can. Obviously, he didn't get it. Or okay. Well, why don't we move on to the signing of the um, Human Resources Grant from the Community Compact? Perfect. And I'd like to entertain a motion for the chairman to sign. You have a motion. I'll second. Excellent. Well, any discussion? Yeah. Great to get it going. Now we have, have we shared with everybody what that's going to constitute? If you want to check the um, scope of work is in the back, you can read it. Oh, okay. We're up to the If Mr. Snyder would like to read this, he can. If you would like me to. If you don't mind, while I'm signing. Is that, is that, no, that's not, it's at the very end. Oh, the scope end. is, this is the, that is the scope. Is that the scope of work? Yeah. yeah. And here's, and here's oh, there's, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's another one. That, yeah, that's Oh, really maybe good. this is the better one. To yeah, read. okay. The scope of work of the HR Consult, again, this is a com community compact, so it's money that can come to us from uh, the state to improve efficiencies within the town. And a human resource consultant is responsible for providing a high level of support in the implementation and administration of a human resource program project or policies. The consultant's main role will be to establish an official HR policy for the town of Brookfield to assist in the creation of a personnel handbook. In addition, the consultant is expected to undertake a variety of HR duties which include, but are not limited to, offering advice and recommendations regarding HR matters, formulating practical, pl uh, practical plans to address HR issues, and to present training sessions on complex HR policies and procedures. Step forward.
February at 4 30, and he said he was going to be here early. Um, okay. If he doesn't make it, I have a copy of the information that he was going to cover with us actually uh, electronically. Well, he's on the agenda after. The right. To license so if he, if he doesn't show up by the end of the meeting, I can at least share the meat of the information that was, it was part of a, a, a small working group meeting within the CIPC. Okay. All right. Why don't we move on to a, do a uh, municipal transfer? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is from the water department, from the water superintendent, James Booz. The amount of the transfer was $1,117.91, and it's going to come from the water casual labor account, and it's going into the water superintendent's cell. Make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 These are some appointments, and I would like to make a, uh, entertain a motion to do the appointments of um, Stephen Pariso, as he's going to be on um, the board of directors for the uh, dispatch overseers. I know you appointed Michael, <coughs> but he didn't want it, and Steve didn't want it, so we okay. switched it over. Okay, that's and also the, um, the bylaw committee. Okay, so and now this is the assistant. We have an assistant animal control officer. And uh, his name is Sydney Plant, and he is. Oh, it's a girl, Sydney Plant. Oh, okay. And we have appointments to the uh, bylaw committee James Cook, Barbara Wilson, Robert Barnes, and Harry Pearson. And Tara Brown. So I'd like to entertain a motion to appoint these. Would they have one more? You have that motion. <coughs> okay. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, now we're Yeah, we'll question about the bylaw committee because they haven't been terribly active in the past. Are there any particular areas that we'd like to at least actively communicate uh, or charter them with looking at between now and the special town well, meeting? There is a charge. There is a charge for them right. out there. And they can just, um, like, uh, if anybody comes forward to you like a bylaw, you know, they usually come to them and they review it and then they decide if they want to have, you know, put it on the meeting. And uh, didn't, did we want to have them review the one uh, we had on the, for the advisory board? We should probably we should have do that. Yeah, we should have them review that one. The, the other, uh, the, probably important one is back to the HR stuff. Is that yeah. We have bylaws that are related mm -hmm. to HR yeah. that need to be modified. modified. Um, especially if we're going to have a working procedure. Right. So, so I think that if there's a priority there, as this HR thing kicks off, that, that would be probably about number one. For me, anyway. So we may want to yeah, let them know that that's coming, yeah. have a conversation yeah. with them, let them know that that's coming down. Yep. Okay. Now I would like to uh, entertain a motion to sign a cemetery deed. Oh, you have that motion. Second. Up. Okay. 
And we can go on to, uh, if we want to finish it up, have anything under other? Um, I did have one thing. Um, found a couple of flammable cabinets, secondary market from a secondary market vendor, um, 60 gallon capacity. Uh, they look like they would meet the needs of the highway department. We can get two of them for $1,000, uh, which is about, yeah, it's a lot less than new. They'd be like $900 each. These are $500 each picked up. Um, we do have to send somebody out to Raynham to go pick them up. Highway superintendent said he was on board with it. Now, where are these coming from? They're coming from Raynham, Mass. It's a place called, uh, I think it's, uh, look at the, uh, the company. It's, uh, I think it's American Material Handling Corp or something like that. They, they specialize in used uh, warehouse equipment. If there's somebody I've worked with in the past, they yeah. usually have real quality stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, um, they happen to have some come in that are good. like good size, good condition. So um, I just wanted to I, I wanted to ask for a motion to go ahead and allow the treasurer to cut a check or the uh, accountant to to t accept it off of the bid and cut a check against the bid so that um, they could actually hand carry a check when they go pick them up. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that way we can get the all the math and accounting done in advance and we'll be able to get those. So, um, And then uh, I was going to just double check if uh, um, I sent just a preliminary inquiry to Sturbridge because I had heard that they finally had a facility for, mm -hmm. for holding stray animals uh, and it had been an issue that was raised uh, by the folks who were filling in when our ACO was off was that we don't currently have a facility and none of the surrounding communities mm -hmm. do. Um, Sturbridge has said that they are at least willing to discuss what kind of terms or conditions they would have. I talked to him, I talked to the town manager today and he called up. Yeah. And he said I guess the one that handles the water that down there also is he's the chief of police. Okay. Tom Ford. Yeah, Ford. Sure. He does it. Oh, wow. So he's yeah, so he said he would be willing to sit down. He said he's with Karen, Karen and I and I said also probably the end of the control officer. Sarah, and we'll discuss that possibility. Yeah. He said they could probably work with us until we get one. Until we get one, right, exactly. And exactly. Sarah was pretty excited to hear that anybody had one, so. So we'll have to, we can probably set something up then to get together with him. That is great. So did you want to take point on, on yeah. negotiating that? Yeah, I'll, I'll go down. Yeah, so Karen and I, Karen will take some time, because he said, you know, we all want to come down and talk. So that, that, that says that the West Coast field, the idea of them adding on is a bad idea. It's not going to happen. Okay. And then I, then I don't think that they want that. They don't want anything built on the top of the landfill. Right. Yeah. They don't want anything down. I don't know. There were a couple of other sites that, that we had considered, um, or at least that we were talking about. Is, is there any opportunity on any other property in town besides the transfer station? Wherever we put it, we have to have, I think you have water, to have water electricity, and then uh, in the summer you have to have the air conditioning, in the winter it has to be heated, so I don't know if it's any place we'd have to run lines to do all this. Herb? Actually, they have, they have, um, is Herb going to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. They, they have prefab buildings that if you just can run power and water to them, um, that you can get that, that meet all of the state requirements. Um, but we have to figure out what kind of traffic it would have. But then we have to find out where we want to point to, okay. of course, not going to bother people. Well, I think the regional perspective is best. Yeah, if, if, if we can have a regional yeah. response, that's yeah. probably right. best for was, all of us. Was Westbrook Field looking at, at establishing one? Or no, no, that over in Westbrook Field had spots, and we have used them in the past. Right. And the, que and the question was, were they interested in adding on because it was based on capacity? Mm -hmm. right. And so if they were interested to add on, that might be a way to fill those uh, counts. Okay. So that was that idea. But, but Sturbridge is willing to, to help us out. You know, I think it's worth to go down and talk to them about Well, it. and I think it stressed the whole nature of a regional mm -hmm. response yeah. because we do need to do something. Okay, you saying that the permit is here. Yeah, three minutes. Permit, can you have your uh, discussion with us in three minutes because we have the bid opening? Or do you want to wait? We have the bid openings for the bridge, so can you do your discussion in three minutes? 
start and stop. Oh, we can, we can actually, oh, we, can, we can start late for the bid opening. We just oh, can't start before. It's 7 or 1 already. Oh. We've, got to, we've got to do it. We've got, we looked up the protocol for it. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'd like to entertain, entertain a motion to open the uh, bid openings at 701. You have that motion. Second. Okay. And we see two bids came back because I think it was a couple of weeks ago we had three people that came in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because I had come in. And, and those two bids from three of the, any of the people who were here. What's it? Are uh, the two bids from people? Yes, the people, the yeah, there's the two people that were here. So I think probably appropriate that the highway superintendent and administrator come uh, forward okay, and you assist can, us. Yeah, you can assist us. I'll open them and you can look them over too and see what you think. Construction service. They're from 7, 775 Pleasant Street, Unit 11 from Weymouth, Mass. Okay, their total bid is $271,700. from New England Infrastructure Incorporated at 13 Brent Drive, Holden Mass. And their total bid is $332,200. We, we need the originals. Yeah, yeah they need the originals. originals. And he said he wanted copies. That's what he told me. Does he want the originals? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. No, no, he no, he wants no, copies. We need to keep the yeah. originals. Mm -hmm. He wants copies of copies of So, uh, I would like a motion to, uh, take the bids under advisement and uh, accept submitted bids and take them under advisement. Do you have that motion? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So now, given that we have them in hand, is there any action that we need to take yeah. tonight no. as you do the analysis? No, because we got to take and uh, go over all of them. They make sure everything's in line and stuff. So we have the funding available to... We're going to have to uh, request some Chapter 90 money to uh, complete the project. And I got a project request here. We'll just have to, uh, we got to get this to Mike and make sure which ones we're going to go with and everything. And then we'll have to get the uh, project request filled in the rest of the way for the difference with 15% uh, on top of that. Because that's how the state wants it done. Okay, so we have to match it with 15%? No, no, no. When you do a project request with Chapter 90 money on a road work project, we need 15% on top of what the project approximately would cost. 15% of safety factors, so you know you have the funds available. Yes. In case 
case so it runs over. Yeah. So the 15 percent does that come from the town? No, that that's all, that's just all chapter nine. It's all chapter yeah. nine. So would it be appropriate to have a discussion on Chapter 90 money tonight? We can, if you want, Perfect. if we have time. But uh, you may want to close the bid opening right now. Yeah, okay. I'd, like, okay. I'd like a motion to close the bid opening. You have that motion. Second. Any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to say 706. Yeah, close it. That's what I'm going to Yeah, 706. So are you going to get that up to the engineer? Is that what you said? Yeah, we'll make copies of it tomorrow we and will. stuff oh, here at right. the town hall, and we'll get it uh, mailed out okay. overnight to them so we can get it done. Thank you, spare copy, just for curiosity and education. Sure. Right. So really, it's the status of, of Chapter 90 monies and what those major projects are, and especially with a capital improvement person sitting in the audience that might be interested to understand uh, where we are with different uh, chapter funding. Have to speak up a little louder. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, do we have any um, rough estimates on the material portion for the um, plan for summer 2017? For this summer 2017? Yep. We are doing the uh, crack seal and micro seal on the roads up here in the center of town. That's a we did a project request of. Oops. Can I ask a question before we get started? Sure. So you're at how much funding that's available to us under Chapter 90? This year it's uh, right around 560. I want to say 550. So we've accrued 550 thousand dollars. Yes. That we have available now. Does that include the bridge or not? No. No. So the bridge is separate money that we can request. Yes. Okay. So that we're in what? excess of the 550. Then. Yes. Okay. And we we did a project request earlier this year to uh, do uh, these streets in the center of town to try to save them a little bit longer. Yeah. That's 150. That's on the uh, books right now, out of the Not, 550. Out of the 550. Right. So you're so, above 400,000 that you right. have available to you. Exactly. And then then we with that 400,000, then you you start working the crack seal. Um, oh, we see the Denbrook Bridge now. What the, is that? I'm confused now. Just help me. On right now on chapter chapter 90 that's available to the town of Brookfield. We 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 get five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. All right. Out of that five fifty, one hundred and fifty of it is to the streets here in the center of town to yep. try to preserve these streets a little longer. All right. So you take the five fifty minus the one fifty, we're down to four hundred call. Mm -hmm. Once we figure out what we're doing with the uh, the uh, bids here from the bridge, yeah. we're going to have to do a project request of the difference to take and uh, use Chapter 90 money to uh, get the bridge completed and stuff. So we're looking at probably another 150,000 or so out of Chapter 90 money. Okay, I'm guessing. So they get you back to the three three. Yeah, roughly. Okay. It'd be two something about two fifty. Two, two something. So. And we already appropriated two hundred fifty thousand, didn't we? For no, no, it was no. only one twenty-five or something. Oh, like was that. it? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. And we're down under a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, about well, ninety-five now. But that was the pre-engineering stuff. Correct. Yes. Oh, all right. Okay. So, given that, if we then come to Sawmill Bridge and uh, the ca uh, catch basin stuff. How far do, do we end? We don't. Uh, the bridge in Chapter 90, uh, the bridge in the catch basins, we won't use any of the Chapter 90 money. That's all town funds and stuff town there. That's okay. already there. So, so then it really does say that the idea of replacing the loader is 
the next thing on the list. That's correct. Is that something we should be thinking about tonight or? Well, we need to look at it somewhere know? down the line. There is no question about it. Okay. And I see you're thinking about leasing the vehicle for three years. Yeah. Is that That's the, the, we've done that before with the highway department, do a lease purchase on the equipment. That way we're not tying up a whole years of chapter 90. We're only tying up a portion of it. So a question on, now we're, we're not t talking FY18 yet, so you're, would, you would be expecting FY18 money as well? Yes. And what kind of money are we talking for FY18? Probably somewhere, in that, again, probably around 150 on Chapter 9. Oh, so this is still FY17 money? Yes. Oh. So come next, next April, we'll, we'll receive more money from the state and everything else, about approximately 150. Good. So if any surprises were to come up, we've got a cushion. That's correct. Even if, even if we were to go off and do the loader. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Is there any possibility that uh, I, I don't like doing it this way, but uh, get you guys to sign the uh, project request for that uh, the bridge? So once we figure out what's going on, we can get that paperwork sure. filled out and get it Absolutely. to the state ASAP. I make a motion to sign. There ne there's needs to be two originals there. I'm sorry. There's, there's two, two copies, copies, but they have to be both signed. be originals. So who needs to sign all three? Or? So do we need to make a motion to have the uh, uh, chairperson. chairperson sign? Chairperson. Yeah. chairperson. But you all three need to sign the environmental punch list, which is the third page. Okay. The third page. So let's make a motion that we sign the. No, second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Oh, the townspeople no, we'll already know it. about we'll it. it so. I, I'll, I'll read it. The crack and seal microsurface portions of the following streets River Street, Common Street, Central Street, Lower River, Howard Street, Lincoln Street, Lincoln Street Extension, Sherman Street, and Pleasant Street. And that's going to be crack sealed? Crack sealed and microsurface portions of the following streets. For $150,000. Yep. Sounds like a lot to me. $150,000. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said four fifty. No. Well, I know you've got a lot of experience in doing that type of work, Dave. That's why I rely on people that have the experience that I call yes, out I and have them give me a quote on it before comment. we go out for bids. Thank you for that nice comment. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. Yes, it's very sense. much so. It, it's very, it's very useful. It'll be a useful tool for the um, CIPC as well. Um, if you if you have at least some rough estimates for the future plan portion, you know where you know well, this is like about 150. And, yeah, the thing is, is you. I, some of this the, you might not know until you get into. Well, into closer to that time to do it and stuff. You know, within six or eight months you'll have a better estimated cost on it. Right. If you could ballpark it today dollars, though, uh, it does at least be, help from a standpoint oh, yeah, yeah. Of, of just from a municipal Cindy, planning Cindy. perspective. Let's make sure we sign the That's right okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Do I sign under Yeah, it's something yeah. we can. Yeah, it, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and no one's going right. to yeah. come back and say, yes. gave yes. this That's estimate what I in 2017, okay. and, and I'll say it to the camera yeah. so yeah. that yeah. you know I'm honest it. about it, is that we're well, not going to come back and say, hey, you said in 2017, now it's 2019, and it's 10% higher, someone's going to get well, off. It, right. it happens, you know, price of oil and stuff, things change right. when you're doing you know, or, or you get the engineer out there to do the plan, mm -hmm. and it turns out it's a bigger project mm -hmm. than what you originally thought it was, but from a standpoint of the municipal planning, it's important important for them to at least have like kind of at least a rough ballpark right. um, you know likewise that's a fair number of miles of road actually for the inside of town with it being you know inclusive of, of all of those streets. It's, so it's pretty easy to see where you get that number yeah so all right thank you but if you, you know could, if you could some some people think you know you name off those streets here and everything else they're going well that ain't very much well actually when you do yeah. the road miles, if you do the road miles it's a lot yeah 
Well, do you know you. what the road miles is when you consider all those streets? About it was uh, about, about twenty between twenty five and twenty seven thousand feet. So it's so about five thousand per fifty two hundred to a mile. Miles. So, so it's about five miles. Five miles worth of road work. Yeah. So, so that's where people get too uh, aggressive in figuring that if you go for go on a sheet. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the math. Yeah. So. We also have the state salt bid, which yeah. needs to be signed. Oh. Okay. Oh, Linda, we need another motion to oh. sign. So, so the, this so. is, uh, <coughs> I, I'll make a motion that we uh, sign the state salt bid because you basically we get the best price by going with the state yeah. price. Oh, no. okay, I'll make that motion. A second. Anything else I would tonight? We're at the moment, no, I guess. Unless you want to sign another project request, but that's besides the point. But I think people want no, to talk about it. People probably want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. When is the uh, next meeting that we can discuss that? Uh, we're, 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 yeah, we're meeting on the 25th again. All right. Is that okay from a project from a timing, timing perspective? perspective? If yeah, uh, is there any other people that have to be involved with it? That want to discuss? I would think not. Right. The sub, we're talking the bridge, right? No, the, the uh, you sorry. said something about the loader at the time. Oh, oh. To discuss that down know. the line. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah we wanted it. All right. Yeah. I would think we would want to do that. If it's not the next meeting, a meeting soon after. Yeah, soon after. Yeah. Uh, there's a meeting of the CIPC on the 19th. If you could provide the information about what you're going to be doing with the loader, mm -hmm. to, or what your goal is to do with the loader to CIPC as well. So right. if you just review the request, that would be important that we start routing stuff through them as well. So they understand what's going on with the fleet and, and what the need is what your recommendations for funding are. Right. Okay. Excellent. Uh, yeah. By August 1st, according to our timeline, we're going to go to all departments and give, have them give us current information about capital expenditures for FY18 and FY19. And we've got a very detailed timeline and we'll be working with those people. So by August 1st, We'll be sending out a letter to all the departments, including her, and we'll have a designated liaison, one or two liaison people working with each of the departments to do work with that. As we have in the past, mm -hmm. we've done that, and it's worked fine, and hopefully it'll continue to work that way. Right. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Permits, do you, we have to start our um, class two license at 730, so can you uh, have your little discussion done by then? Yeah, yeah, I said Kermit. Come on up here, Kermit, so up. you can hear us. Yeah. I got bad hearing. Uh, you're going to discuss with us the capital expenditures for FY18. Yeah, uh, j just a very quick update. The CIPC had uh, just a couple of meetings, and subsequent to that, we've identified what our mission responsibilities are. Uh, a timeline to get things done and how we're going to work with the departments and we'll be getting that information out to the select board uh, and again we have a meeting on the 19th and we're going to be talking about that uh, what the request tonight that I have is are there any capital expenditures from the select boards account that will be on the uh, town fall town meeting I think the only yeah. thought is this building. Yeah. And again, it, the, it was the furnace approved last year. The furnace, the expenditures for the furnace. So the, yeah, funding. Yeah, yeah that, that came out of last year. So, so, okay, so that so okay. No, it was so, allocated out of last yeah. year's. So funds. that's not. So, so there won't be anything coming up at the well, fall we, meeting. Well, the gonna, fall meeting might be the stair lift. Yes, yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. The, the stair lift. If we bring that up. Let me let me bring you up up to date on the chair lift. Uh, I've, we've met with Bill Simpson, and mm -hmm. I've contacted the AAB board, and uh, based on what they're 
they've told me verbally, and I don't want to take this as gospel, but it sounds like perhaps an incline, incline chairlift may be okay and not require an elevator for the town hall. Uh, uh, I've passed it back to Bill, and his committee is going to investigate further. Uh, I, thought, I think it's their responsibility to look at that. And I know Mr. Holcraft has talked about that, but an inclined chairlift may not require AAB approval even, or a ADA approval. They said that they would get involved if there was other construction work going on at the time. But uh, uh, I don't want to take that, again, I don't want to take that as gospel. Here's the verbal conversation. So uh, Bill Simpson's committee is going to take the lead on uh, that project. Um, so that's that on that. If there's any questions about that. Herb, yeah. Herb, Herb did you have one? Point. Did that other furnace ever get fixed from this past winter? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the funding was set aside, but it's right. not done yet. Now, has, Mr. has Bill Simpson, we haven't appointed a committee yet, have we? We did. We did. We did two meetings ago, but he was out of town, and they're oh, just now maybe scheduling. I wasn't at that. Was that the one I was Yeah, you missed that. Okay, yes. I missed that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so he's charged. Okay, so he's so, got the charge, and he's so, got so the charge. They just have to schedule. Basically, they need to schedule their first many, meeting. Did he get, get enough? Ma how many members? Was, five members. Oh, got five members. They, they they did say that putting an inclined chairlift would require uh, approval by the building uh, Jeff Taylor's office, yes. mm -hmm. and it may require some sort of a variance. But once he gets past that variance, as I understand it, we're we're clear. But again, he did good. all of it in writing. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. be what they say depends on who you get from the board. By the yeah, way. well, yeah. There's only uh, two members now. One one has resigned, so there's only uh, two people uh, on the a AAB board right now. So we got to get it in writing. So again, I pass the burden back to the committee. That's their responsibility. And if we can get approval to do that, that would be that would be wonderful. I mean, but we're saving a lot of money. Yeah, if that if that could happen, and, and we could and we could start forward with some of the, the yes, other pieces yeah, absolutely. Once, once we can get access. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? Uh, That's it. Anything Anything else more from your committee you'd like to report? Uh, no. Yeah, again, we will be back with the department heads, the select board, the advisory committee. And we've identified what we think our responsibilities are, our mission is, and uh, our timeline to get things done. And uh, we'll be approving that at hopefully our 19th, meeting on the 19th, and get that out to everybody. So what we would also like to do, and we've talked about it, is in the financial policy routines to add your charge, your idea of what you're going to be doing in that book so it's very clear to everyone as far as what your activities are and, and how it impacts the financial uh, Good. So okay. I appreciate what you're doing. Yes. All right. Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we still got a few more minutes, so we'll move on to our correspondence. We have some correspondence from Charter Communication. It says, Dear Municipal Officials, this letter gives notice that the following changes will be made to your channel lineup. Universal HD will cease transmission of this channel on all service levels on or about July 14, 2017. The Olympic channel will be launched on SSP Tier 1, which is silver level of service, and SD and HD on or about July 14, 2017. For a complete lineup, visit spectrum.com channels. To view this online, visit spectrum.net programming notices. If you have any questions, you can reach uh, Anna Lucy at charter.com or you can call her at 774-243-9735. Now we have one from Joseph Leveriere, Sr. of 10 Peyton Avenue. 
He would like to do some metal detecting on the common if I can. I would donate any relics I find to the town as part of its history. I can be reached at email at olivierasenia at hotmail.com or by phone at 508-867-9508 for any other questions. Thank you. I don't see any problem with that bowl there, but um, I'm just curious of a past practice. I, yes, I, I think. The reporter the yes. summer did come in yes. asking, people, and the board didn't yeah. allow it. They said no. Oh, they didn't allow no, it. No, they didn't. But they I know there have been says. people, I've seen them all over town, what? doing that. I'm sure. Uh, I'd say so long as he, uh, I'm wondering if, if we require some nominal bond from him to make sure he doesn't do any turf damage in the case of trying to recover any artifacts. I, I, I don't know if we refer it back to the, the Bannister Committee is still in place, right? Are they? No. I don't think so. Because they, they, they haven't been they had, so long. Isn't that isn't there a bylaw on that? Isn't there a bylaw about no no detecting on the common? It's been no for years. No 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 no. That's what you all said. No no. Oh, it's been no. I don't think I don't know if it's. I don't think there's a bylaw. No, I don't think there's a bylaw. I don't remember reading it, but I can check. I don't ever remember. Ken. No, somebody requested it years ago and you know turned it down. Yeah. They they've always been turned down. Okay. No, it's no bylaw, right? As I've read, I've read through them no many a times. There's yeah, no I was going to say, not to, to no, mess my no knowledge, there's, there's nothing in there specific so to metal detecting. If it's on never been property. allowed before, then I'll say that, you know, we're not going to allow it this time. Yeah. So, Karen, if you just wanted to, you know, give him a, a note, write it back and tell him. Okay, that's, that's it. That, let's see, what are we going to pay for time? Three more minutes, or can we open it up? We want to wait to see if any more butters arrive. Yeah, we, we, do. we, we have, have to leave. Yeah, we have yeah. to wait. Yeah. We have three that. more minutes. Okay. Uh, does the gentleman who is um, going to be operating uh, Brookfield Auto, is he here? I am here on his behalf. He's okay. not here. Okay, would you like to come up and sit, please? Uh, he actually requested that uh, if there was something else on the agenda, if we could uh, attend that first. He is running about 10 minutes late due to traffic. I didn't hear you, sir. He's, uh, he's, running, he's, he's running, running late. He's running about 10 minutes late due to traffic. He's okay. requesting if there's something else on the agenda. Mm -hmm. maybe like, do you want to recess for 10 minutes? Yeah. Or can I do an other and sit on the other side? Is it too late to do that? And other, what are we? <laughs> I'd like to bring up our problem on Quay Box. Oh. Okay, I'll come over here. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. We're back to Quay Box Street now. Okay. okay. All right. I'd like to bring up the racetrack at 5 Quay Box Street. Uh, it's, he said it's practice sessions down there. But. Um, He's, they're going all day long. There's no hours set for them to be down there. I've called the environmental police and they, they take your name and number and they say, we'll get back to you. And it's just an all day thing that goes on till eight o'clock at night and it doesn't stop. And it, 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 in Sundays you can hear the noise in the house. And I mean, I know we're going back to court with them on July 26th about this, but I mean, he's running a business down there. He doesn't have any permits from what I understand, and I don't think he should be down there doing that. And he's disturbing a lot of people. More people have been stepping up than when we originally had this. So the only thing that I understood from when we went around on this the last yeah. time is from an enforcement perspective, it was noise and that there are certain criteria of off-road vehicles yeah. that are required by yeah. Mass General Law, that 96 dBA of a new bike, 108 by an old bike, but that, that the environmental police were or are to enforce that noise level. So do we have any further information on noise level? Uh, my husband has been keeping a chart so of we, So we have a log of... Yeah, he's been keeping, yeah, he has been. Okay. And I mean, it just seems you call the environmental police, and I did happen to find somebody, it was a week ago this past Sunday, and she did answer, and she said she would have somebody check it out, and she would have them call me back, and I didn't hear anything at all. 
from them. And he was even, he, one thing I can say, he was courteous on 4th of July. He wasn't up there on the 4th. But I mean, he's that Saturdays, Sundays, it, it goes on all the time. Yeah. And he, so I, think it should, I think it should be checked out. I mean, he's, he's uh, been advertising on his website. He's charging for these people to come down there and practice. So he is running a business. And then he also has a showroom. You can, he's had that on, um, that's been online too. He's got a showroom where he sells the uh, bikes. He sells dirt bikes down there. He has also the, um, the suits that you have to wear, the helmets, the whole works. So as a, as a vendor in town, and I, forgive me for not being familiar with, with our own bylaws regarding that, do they need any so type of vendor license? Permit, sure. permit? Yeah, he's got to get some permits. He should come up. I don't even know if he's registered business, his, his business here with the town. And that'd be registered with the town clerk? With the town clerk. The town but clerk. So, and you had and a The question. original order of conditions of the Conservation Commission with the DEP, there was supposed to be a, a noise barrier. Uh -huh. It's like a 10 or 12 foot wall. He never put one up. He, he, put, did. he did some kind of a six foot wall down there. But I think that was just to keep the banking up. That's well, all he did. Yeah, and I was wondering about that because I know that noise yeah. barriers no, can he, be a part of it, but no. he hasn't installed it. No, he has a six foot one back. And what it does, it just holds the wall up. It's not actually a noise barrier. Right. Yeah, they've done nothing. No, There's nothing I, down there. I had DEP come down again. Mm -hmm. I had the Judith Schmidt come down and look at it. Or nothing wrong with it. I said, well, it shouldn't be there. No, 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 no. I had a question. Would you share with us what, what was decided in court, Linda? That was we got a court decision from the town, correct? Uh, there was a court decision and it, there was a, and yeah. it was legal for what he's doing there, correct? Yeah, he, it was legal. It's legal, right? But we're supposed to be going back to court to find out just what hours he's going to be allowed to do. I didn't, uh, yes, I would. You should. Did, did the court, I thought the court already put We're going decision. back to court with it. And we're, I don't know. If There's a determination of determination hours. Determination of hours, what the hours are going to be. Yeah, clarification on there. Yeah, reason. we have to find out the clarifications of what's going on. But it's very aggravating. It bothers the, it, it travels over the water. It's bothering people. Um, that live up like Boys Avenue by us. It's, it's coming down the whole lake area. So it, it's it, it's noise. It's noise. And and so I think, Linda, if you would like, if you could share your log with me, I mm -hmm. will do the calculations that okay. I did the, the first time okay. so that we can turn around and then forward them off to the local rep to put some pressure right. on environmental police to follow up. Right, well, and I think I don't we maybe need he, to get with the zone I board. don't know if he would. I think Ann Gobi would be better off because... Uh, Mr. Uh, I mean, Representative Berthium is a farmer dirt bike rider, <laughs> so I don't know. So I think we go should go. go for well, both. Well, I, we should but go actually, we should go for both because, frankly, people who are responsible riders actually want people to be compliant so that there's less mm -hmm. resistance against getting yeah. the ride. So I'd right. say you, you, if you can, if, if you can convert, convince anybody to support it. Sometimes it's just like yeah. responsible hunters. Responsible hunters don't like yahoos that go out there shooting people's dogs, you know. So, so if you if you could th through the admin, give me a copy of the log. Okay. I'll do the calculations as I did the, the original set okay. of logs, but which proved that he was out of compliance. Yeah, he is. Absolutely yeah. was out of compliance, and that it's now time to go to the environmental police to say that here is now a log of these readings. Yeah. And the, this is the, the calculation based on this, and it's suggesting that the vehicles are not in compliance and have the uh, environmental police, as they're charged to do, enforce the law. I mean, we, we've been putting up with this since uh, probably 1982. It's been a long time. And then they did, did have a brief period of time where they weren't there at all. So, so, so do we have, like, basically three different levels of noncompliance? We have noncompliance on the noise. Right. We have non-compliance on uh, offering stuff for sale on a premises that doesn't currently have a business license once yeah. we verify that with the town clerk. Yeah. Okay. And then it sounds like we have a non-compliance with Zoning Board of Appeals conditions of operations with yeah. regards to putting up an appropriate noise barrier that conforms with the 10-foot the requirement. But that's, that's what Jeff though, isn't it? Building inspector. Yeah, for the, I think he well, had... it's an order of condition. But it's an order of condition. Oh, that's from the order of condition? Yeah, zoning board of appeals. So, 
Um, so I think Jeff would enforce it in some ways. Yeah, Jeff would enforce it. He'd go down and look or he'd, at it. Or he'd verify it. Because he was the one that came back and said that it was only a six-foot wall and that it was there just to keep you know, the walls up. It wasn't a noise barrier. Right. And I know the zoning enforcement office has been down there also. So at least let's start off with the noise. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. What yes, but I'm sitting over here okay. though as a private Who's citizen, Mr. All right, Clarence. What did the actual court say to the town of Brookfield about him operating down there? Oh, that he was that he, he's, he's legal to operate. To operate. Now, now just for pra if he, if but just for practice so sessions, not races. Say that we could have had to say because we did due diligence the way we were supposed to from the get go. So I think I think what he's doing is legal. He's only doing practice sessions. Right. That's all he can do. That's correct. He is legal to okay. operate in compliance to Mass General Law. What we've been chatting about here for a couple of minutes <coughs> is that he, his riders are out of compliance because we have well, we've got readings. A log of we have a log of readings of the decibel levels on the street, calculating back to what it should be a decibel. The readings that Linda originally received were in the 90s and low hundreds of decibel uh, levels. So that we had that um, information when we first, we, the town bought a decibel meter, that's what the readings were. If you take 100 dBA and you move it back to the 20 inches that it's supposed to be measured at, that the bikes were running about 130 dBA. That's out of compliance. I don't think, that, I don't think that's accurate what you're saying, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. So okay. we I don't want to confuse you with the facts, Mr. Holcraft. Those aren't the facts. Well, uh, Mike Baraka, the co-chair of the conservation, knows some of the other guys on the environmental police, and they went down there twice. They, he had them go down twice, and there was four guys down there, and half the kids that were riding there weren't old enough to be on the bikes. And it was like eight or ten kids that haven't had, in Massachusetts, they have to have so many, so many hours of mm -hmm. riding, and none of them did, so he pulled it down twice. So it's time for them to go back down. Yep, I think it is. Yep. So okay, well, thank you for hearing me out. All right, and it's... Are we on? How close are we now? How, where is he in route? I will have to check this. Okay. Well, why don't we do a recess for... Like five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. All right. Lunch, check it out. Yeah, I'll make a motion to recess. Yes, and I'll take a second. And we're uh, recessed for the next five minutes. Oh, or so. Or so. We'd like to reconvene the meeting at 7.44 p.m. And I would like to entertain a motion to open the Class 2 license hearing. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we're going to have it's a public hearing on uh, Tuesday, July 11, 2017 for Class 2 license. It's Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Mass. 01506. In accordance with Massachusetts general law, please be advised a public hearing will be held at 7.30, which it's not, it was 7.44, on Tuesday, July 11, 2017, in the Banquet Hall in the Brookfield Town Hall, 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass. This hearing is for the application for a Class 2 or seller's license by Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Massachusetts. Ah. And we have a representative here from uh, Brookfield Auto, and if you'd like to um, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Boris Saprosnikov, and i um, the owner of the LLC. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, can, can you, uh, we've seen that you've been doing a lot of work down there, and yes. sprucing the place up, and so yeah. maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, well, basically, we did the renovations, you know, so the place looks nice, so it's accessible, you know, and basically to service the people around <laughs> in surrounding areas, and, uh, you know, I would like the facility to be nice. Uh, we did some paving in front, we're going to do a little more, a little bit later, but for now, the building, you know, we just went through main systems of the building, make sure everything is working, you know, good working order. And that's basically it for now. And so, so you're gonna have like all uh, used autos, or you're gonna yes, have used. used autos? Mm -hmm. okay. Used only. Oh. Are you gonna be doing stickers? Yes, but unfortunately, Massachusetts decided not to do anything until October. They're redoing the program, 
So as soon as it's available, yes. Oh, so you are going to be doing yes. the stickers? Oh, as soon as good. it's available. Yeah, yeah, because we used to do, they used to yeah. do them down at one time. Well, that's we good would love to, as soon as possible, but they closed the program until October 1st. Okay. No would you like to say anything else about the business that you're going to operate? Well, I mean, <laughs> we'd like to, you know, service everybody as that's best good. as we can, and we're going to have, um, you know, uh, auto repair and auto body repair, too. So, you know. Hopefully nobody needs it that much, but you never know. Okay, well, we welcome you to town yep, and the new thank business. You. Okay, do we have any of the abutters that are here that would like to speak? Mr. W Mr. Blaze, would you like to speak? There's no, not much more to say. I mean, uh, to, my, uh, to my knowledge, none of the zoning, the zoning laws, the bylaws, have never been approached to talk about. So. From what it sounds like to me, it's, it's cut and dry. I mean, he's got, the, he's got the, the, the permit and the license to, to operate, and there's no, there's, I have no clout. I mean, well, I mean, he hasn't got the license he yet. This is, license. He hasn't got the license yet. What we're doing, this is the hearing about it, and we asked uh, any of the, but he, he sent out notices to any of the abutters who were within 300 feet of the property to come down here and voice their opinions. Well, why, would, why would somebody go through the expense of doing all the renovations if he hadn't even been permitted to work? No, I mean, it's almost like it's, 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 it's cut and dry. It's almost like they've been accepted. We I, haven't I accepted it. We haven't, we haven't even... And, and, and get denied. Well, we haven't even voted on this yet. This is, we're having a hearing. This is what the hearing's for tonight. Well, it seems like I'm the only neighbor here from Maple Street. But from my point of view, as far as uh, I understand that you have a license to operate, I understand that you know it's business known. Well, he doesn't have it yet. But the thing I have to I have to caution, whether it's Brookfield Motors or whether it's the new Lisa or, 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 or sorry, the buyer, is that your lot adjoins a neighborhood, mm -hmm. an adjacent neighborhood. It's a very quiet neighborhood. And I, for one, and the neighbors agree, but somehow they won't speak up. Uh, we kind of like it quiet. We like it neat. I mean, uh, with Brookfield Motors, there's been a lot of debris. There's been a lot of construction going on, a lot of the, the construction, which, which is very disturbing to the neighborhood. From my point of view, and I'm right there on your fence. Matter of fact, one day last week, one of your, one of your employees, whatever you employed to do the construction, I'm sitting there, and they're playing their music, and I'm saying, wow. I mean, I'm 40% deaf. And so I went over, I asked him to quiet down the music, and I said, I hope this is not going to be a, uh, you know, a potential of what's going to happen in the future, as far as being quiet, uh, unnecessary noise. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not sure exactly what, what this entails. But I know from my point of view, as a, as a resident, adjacent to by a great street, mm -hmm. We like it quiet. I can assure you it's going to be as quiet as any dealership operation or even quieter. And I like quiet too. And if there's any unnecessary debris or whatever it is that's in the backyard, no. I originally suggested, but it never went through, that they put up a privacy fence so we're not subjected to the, you know, to the. the we, don't, we don't even plan on any debris. There shouldn't be any debris. There should be cars for sale, that's it. Are you planning to use the backyard? Yeah, but only for storage of the cars, nothing else. Because I noticed that you know, the gate has been closed for years. And well, I the other day you opened up the Yeah, backyard. just to make it work, <laughs> you know, to oil it a little bit. You know, I, I like things to work if they're there, okay. you know. <laughs> I don't like them to be forgotten. <laughs> so, but no, this, as far as the debris, there's not going to be any debris. Unless you consider cars debris, but uh, they're just used cars, nothing else. And That's you're, what. You're, you're allowed of operation is going to be like eight to five, eight to six, eight to seven. Uh, you know, it's for convenience of people. Sometimes, you know, somebody's working, they might show up at six, seven. I mean, sometimes people after work, you know, they come and they want to take a look at cars, whatever. But it does not include any noise. I mean, you know, it's going to be in the showroom, if anything. And you know, if we have to show the car, I mean, you know, the only noise is going to be if you start the engine. I mean, that's just, you know, there's not going to be any, anything special going on. It's just vehicles that are stored there and, you know, whenever we need to take one out to show, that's the only what would noise. Your, what would your service hours be? Service is probably going to be until 6. 
like I said, because of the convenience, you know, a lot of people are working, they can't make it. You know. So what time would you open in the morning? Did you <coughs> Eight. Eight in the morning. Okay. I will see if there's demand, we'll open early. You know, it depends. I mean, seven is a possibility, but we're not playing right now. Eight is more like it. We're just waiting for the administrative system to come back because I saw her. She made a mistake on the date, so she'll be right back. Okay. So that we could sign. So the, the, the question and Roland's concern, maybe concern, mm -hmm. was that there were a number of vehicles that were uh, not uh, in service that were just left on the mech fence. And it was left there for a very long period of time. I know. If, and, and if those kinds of things could be. I don't like it Boy. myself, but unfortunately, it's the owner's vehicles of the lot. Right. So if that's of a concern of some sort, I mean, we put them in the back and we try to keep them like, you know, together in the back. There's like three of them or whatever. But if it's ever a concern, I mean, I can talk to him and see if we can maybe remove them off the lot. I don't like them myself, but, yeah, you know, if we're if not the owners of the if building. If it's possible, that has been okay. an irritant of the neighbors for a no very problem. long time. Yeah. I can so talk that, to him. If, if that's something that could be... Uh, Address. I'm sure address, something could address. That would be very helpful. I just, you know, in the beginning stage, we didn't bother too much, but, Understood. you know, again, not even our vehicle, so. I would never keep something like this in there. It's just. You understand that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the Class 2 license for Brookfield Auto, LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Mass. For his used car dealer's license, Two, to buy and sell secondhand motor vehicles. And this will uh, expire on December 31st, 2017. I'll make, that, I'll make that motion. No, second. Any discussion on this? No. All in favor? Aye. Very well. Mm -hmm. Aye. Yeah. Well, sir. Better than a big lot, that's for sure. Awesome. It's going to look nice, you wish. <laughs> Please. You can we'll wait because we're going to give you a license. We'll give the license to Oh, you. today? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. She's just going to run and make a quick copy, and then she'll be right back. He's already paid his fee. Mm -hmm. And he has all the requirements, and you can look through his application. Hey, every, I know you have everything. Yeah, good. Okay. The only thing is, like you say, it expires in December. Yeah. Do we apply in January? Yep. Just make sure he knows that. Just make sure he knows that. Yes. <coughs> So if you a copy, then do we want to do a motion to adjourn? Yep, I'd like a motion, and it's a motion to adjourn the meeting at, at 7.54. 7.54. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye.